Welcome back to another review where today's model is the Atlas C8-40W and the Atheron ST70 ACE. So let's get into the review of these American locomotives. Starting off with the Atheron ST70 then, this locomotive is in the very striking Powered by Our People livery, which was made to commemorate everyone in the Union Pacific Company. That that's the word. Um, so there's all different positions of the Union Pacific Railway. There's uh, engineers, um, signalers, uh, track maintenance crew. Um, this locomotive has the running number of 1111. It's a very hard running number to say. Um, so the SD70 is a six axle locomotive and is very long. It dwarfs almost everything on my layout including the C840W. Um, so some immediate details are obviously the livery, which has been doing, done very well by Atlas, not Athen. Um, and the underframe is a grey colour, which is a uh, slightly lighter than this grey, which breaks up the livery going into the main part section of the livery. Um, the bogies are very nicely moulded. There's uh, piston details, the hubcaps, they don't spin, unfortunately. There's other details, I think there's sunpipes somewhere. Yes, yes, sunpipes. And there's other details around the bogey as well. In the centre you have this absolutely massive fuel tank uh, with uh, the, I think that's the emergency stop button somewhere around there. I think that's the level of the fuel. Um, so this has the wide cab, meaning, well, it goes the length of the locomotive, width, sorry, of the locomotive. Um, so, the livery itself starts off with this nice red stripe with a smaller yellow stripe, then it goes into grey, there's a power by our people decal just under here, the running number is just there, instead of there, where they usually are, but it's there, very tiny, and then it's the America, uh, the, uh, the US flag, and then we've got our first side, that's track maintenance, track maintenance again, track maintenance, signaler I'd like to say, and then I think that's a signaler again, yeah. That would make sense. Uh, so that's basically what delivery is all about. It's about all the job positions in the Union Pacific uh, Company. Um, so the steps on either end of the locomotive have white, um, uh, painted white on the front for visibility reasons, obviously. Um, and then the foot plate, or whatever you want to call it, is just a grey colour. Uh, I think it's the same colour as this. Maybe, maybe slightly darker. There's a white stripe running along the bottom here, and then there's a, some writing actually. What does that say? Oh, it's uh, safety. So some other details include the Union Pacific Shield, which is just at the end here, just by the running number. Um, there's grills. There's one here, 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 here. Don't think there's any etched grills. This might be actually you can see through it. That might be etched, but I, I'm I'm not really going to try and get to that and break the handrails. Oh yes, the handrails too. Re very prominent detail on U.S. locomotives. Obviously, practically all of them have some sort of handrail uh, detail. Um, Athen have done this very well. It's flimsy, but as long as you don't pick it up like that. As long as you pick it up by the fuel tanks, you should be fine with that. As I said, powered by our people decal just up here. Very nice. Uh, uh, the whole livery is very nicely applied and obviously stands out from the rest of my uh, stock. Um, what else is there? Oh yes, there's the horns. You can just see them up here. They are plastic, not etched. But there's five of them, meaning it's a five-chime horn. There's... um. Four facing forwards and one facing backwards. That's painted red. And then there's the more grills under here. They're etched. Yeah, they're etched. Oh, you can tell by the feel. More grills. There's basically grills in livery, this loco. But it's, it's a very nice locomotive. So let's move on to the other side. So here we have the other side of the locomotive. Once again, up front you have the same thing as the other side, Union Pacific Shield, running number, powered by our people. Uh, same thing, red stripe, yellow stripe, grey, livery. Um, 
Ameri uh, uh, the US flag is there again. I prefer this side just that you get the full flag and there's no raised bit covering the thing. Um, so um, there's different job positions on here. I think that's an actual driver, but they call them engineers over there. So I think I don't know. I don't know what that is. That that looks to be maintenance on the actual locomotives. Uh, that looks to be a welder actually. Just just spotted the uh, m uh, mask. Then there's uh, more locomotive maintenance and track maintenance and locomotive maintenance. A lot of maintenance on this. Um, once again, Bogue is the same fuel tanks and the same, except for these little uh, s cylindrical pieces. Once again, same detail, emergency stop somewhere, fuel filler cap, you know, all the standard stuff. Steps are painted white again. Horns are there, everything's there. Except for there's just a non-raised piece, well, it's still raised, but... You uh, there's a door behind there, so that's that. That's really it for the side. Let's move on to the front. So here we have the front of the locomotive, which is painted in a very nice light blue colour. On the actual photos of this loco, um, it looks white, but it is blue. So let's start with the detail. Um, sticking out to you already is the Union Pacific shield with wings. That's very nicely applied. Uh, dark blue, same colour as the top of the Union Pacific uh, uh, logo. Uh, there's ladder, there's a grab iron, sorry, not ladder. Well, grab irons to made out, uh, made to be a ladder. They're um, they're separately fitted, which is nice, very nice detail. There's another grab grab iron just behind here. So towards down towards the footplate, or whatever you want to call that, I don't know the name of it. You have ditch lights. When you sound the horn, they do not flash, but I believe that is true with the SD70. Um, so the so you have the ditch lights. The lights are all LED front and back, so they're nice and bright. Um, there's no cab lights, unfortunately. A thing that really gets missed out with US locomotives. Um, so here's a door just here. There's a little decal up there, don't know what that says but that's a door as most wide uh, wide cab American locos have that on the front. There's more grab irons here, here, here there's separately fitted uh, windscreen wipers just here then you have the running uh, the number boards they do not light up but it's understandable because the headlights is right there that's LED as I've said so, um, down towards here you have the coupling, which is a standard uh, knuckle coupling. I've had no issues with it. Uh, I have Atlas wagons and there's no like height issues or anything like that. So that works fine. There's rubber multiple unit cables down here. Obviously, uh, the handrails here. Once again, very flimsy. More handrails behind here. Again, flimsy, separately fitted, uh, grab iron, um, and that's really it for the front. Uh, yeah, obviously a snowplow down here. Yep, yeah, but that's really it. Let's move on to the back. So here we have the back of the locomotive once again in that blue colour, but we have the grey invading at the bottom. Just down here, there's a there's a red stripe which leads off from the roof down onto the rear. There's a little sh um, thing there. A little shield, the emblem round all, that's the word. It's, I can't read it, even through my camera I can't read it. But it's on the box, I'll read it then. Uh, here we have some, once again, separately fitted grab irons in a ladder formation, and there's a grab iron just up here. The headlights are in a 2x2 uh, two two, um, formation, side by side, as I should say. Um, there's no ditch lights on the rear. But I don't think you're really going to need them on the rear. Once again, uh, handrails. Flimsy, but not too flimsy on here. They've actually got quite a bit of support from the centre. you got chain detail of the um, crosswalk. That's obviously nice. And then once again, round there, the snow plow, you've got the same detail. Coupling that works completely fine. Uh, uh, rubber multiple unit cables, other details. Oh, and you've got the little... And uh, handles that unlock the coupling. So 
that's really it for the rear. Nothing much to talk about. It's mainly the sides that have stuff to talk about. So let's move on to the roof. So then, here we have the roof of this locomotive. So the immediate details are obviously that red stripe, very prominent. Obviously, from the angle that I'm looking down at the locomotive, always see it. Here we have the exhaust, which is a grill. Really interesting. <laughs> I've never seen a grilled exhaust. Uh, we've got a power bar people decal on the roof as well. Uh, more towards the cab, we have, um, like, I'm guessing that's radio stuff, but it could be, um, some weird grab iron stuff as well. Uh, there's more smaller detail, white dots, don't know what they do. These things, don't know what they do. Um, obviously towards the rear you've got three fans, two that bulge out like this. Here and here, which have very, very nicely detailed fans inside of them. And then here you've got another fan that you can't see through, but it has a um, etched, um, etched grill over in it. So there is little tiny holes. Um, once again, painted in this nice blue round this section. But over here, it's painted in the grey, which ends at the exhaust and then just travels by the stripe. All the way down. The horns are there again, as I said, the five chime horns, uh, four facing forwards, one bit facing backwards. Uh, there's obviously the sun visors on the cab, very, very nice details. Uh, glazed windows uh, for the cab, didn't mention that, but yeah, glazed windows, very nicely tinted on the side there. Um, I don't think there's really much else to talk about of for this locomotive, so let's move on to the C8-40W. So here we have it then. The Dash 8 in the BNSF Warbonnet livery. It has the running number of 812. So let's get into the detail. Obviously, things that stick out, uh, BNSF decal just there. Uh, it's, it's got the red front, obviously, because right, this is the Santa Fe livery that they use, but obviously it's Burlington Northern Santa Fe now. But this is known as the War Bonnet, so it's got a nice gold stripe going round, and then it goes down along the loco. Um, and then obviously um, you got a black stripe outline in that as well. So let's move on from that. Grills everywhere along here, moulded unfortunately, etched that one is, uh, moulded, 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 moulded. Moulded, moulded, yeah, lots of moulding detail, but it all looks nice, looks very nice. Um, you got plenty of warning stickers on here. Can't read them, but um, obviously, uh, just look at the real thing. Um, you've got the exhaust up here, where it's just a single exhaust in a rectangular shape. Glazed windows, once again, uh, sun visors are there as well. 812 decal you can just see the thing coming off the front from the Santa Fe uh, what's it thing it has a name, don't know so moving on to the bogeys, once again you got them hubcaps that don't spin but it's not noticeable you got this little thing up here that connects the uh, brake pistons on the fuel tank uh, it's, on this side it's got these little two c cylindrical pieces ju just like the uh, SD70 except for that one I did along the top but this one actually has it in the fuel tank so that's going to affect its uh, affect its cap capacity on the front bogey you've got the same detail old caps there same same pole thing fuel filler cap uh, Instead of white, the, um, these steps are painted yellow, uh, but there's silver behind that yellow, so it's, it's just a visibility thing. Uh, so here we have the other side, not much different except for, um, obviously you've got this raised piece, which is common to find on these American locomotives. There's one bad thing about this locomotive, is that this thing, uh, handrail, has no support, 
uh, like the real thing, but obviously are, are the real things and rail being made out of metal and this one made out of plastic, the plastic kind of sags a bit after time. So once again you got the war bonnet livery, the gold stripe, black line out, out, outline in that, you, you got the BNSF uh, logo. Um, but there's some different bogey details on this one, on this side. So you, you got the brake pistons, but on the front bogey you got speedo cable going into the rear wheel. Hubcap blanked out. And then on the rear bogey you've got a brake chain, which is very nice detail, definitely it's something that we're seeing more in the market. Obviously Batman's new 37 features it, Acura Scales Deltic and Acura Scales 37s also have a brake chain. But it's something that we're seeing more of. And that's made up, and that's etched, so that's just going to freely move. Once again, um, steps are painted yellow with the silver with the silver base colour, but yellow for visibility. Uh, you got the handbrake or whatever that wheel is. Don't know, probably handbrake. But you got two girls up here, which is different from the other side. They're painted black, moulded. Once again, etched uh, grills up here, and then you got etched grills on the top. Not really much on the roof except for a few patches and stuff. So let's move on to the front. So here we have the front of the locomotive. Very, very interesting. Uh, you got a Santa Fe Randall thing on the front, just here. Separately fitted grab irons again in that ladder. Grab irons around here, grab iron, grab iron, grab iron. Uh, you got a door next to the main headlight. These are not LED lights, unfortunately. So they're kind of dim. Uh, ditch lights down here, these ones do flash when you sound the horn, very nice, very nice to watch really. Uh, uh, got the hoops, we, or not the coupling. Uh, the coupling is just your standard Atlas coupling, it just opens and closes, no issues with that for me. Up the top you do have the number boards, uh, which say 812, these ones do light up, and, and you can actually see them. S separately fitted, uh, what's it, um, windscreen wipers, which are etched, they're very strong. Uh, and once again, glazed windows for the cab. Both of these locomotives are sound fitted, this one with a quant quantum sound, I think. I'll, ch I'll check the box. And the other one fitted with tsunami, uh, tsunami 2 decoder. So, a bit of a different decoder for me. Obviously, over here we don't get Tsunami sound. Uh, we get ESUs, uh, Zemo, TTS, all that stuff. But that's really it for this locomotive. The back's just headlight and basically the same stuff on here. So, let's get the... I'm going to show the decoder functions now of the SD70 first. So here we have it then, the SD70. So function zero is the headlight, which fades um, on and off, which is nice. Unfortunately, uh, once you turn the track power on, that engine's going to start, so I can't really show you that. Uh, function one is a belt. That's very nice, it's at a, it's a slow pace, but it's loud enough to hear. Function 2 is the horn. That's a long horn, and you, if you keep function 2 uh, keyed in, that'll keep going until you key it out. Function 3 is a short horn. Um, once you press function 3, it will sound it, and, and when you let go, it will sound it again. Function 4 is the dynamic brake. Function 5 is lighting effect 1, which is the ditch lights. Lighting effect 2 is, I don't know what that is. Anything? Hang on. I'm going to check the back. Nope, nothing for that. Nothing for function 6. I don't know what that does, but it just says lighting effect on the card, so... F7 is dimmer slash cab chatter, F8 is mute, F9 is alternate alternate mixer, which just brings, brings the sound down to half volume, 
Function 10 is straight to 8, which means it will pass it up to the sound will go straight up to notch 8 and it will just the loco will just stand. Um, F11 is brake set slash release. F12 is brake select. F13 is uncouple, sorry, couple slash uncouple. F14 is half speed and momentum o o override. F15 is the handbrake. F16 is hep mode on slash off. F17 is fuel fuel loading sequence. F18 is general surface sequence. F20 is steam generator on slash off. This one does not have that. Um, F23 is the all aboard slash coach doors. F26 is engine RPM notch up. And then F27 is RPM notch down. And then emergency stop for F for F28. So I'm just going to try something, uh, it's F20. Ooh. Yeah, that doesn't work. Didn't think it had it. So, that's it for all the functions. Let's move on to the C8-40W. So, with the Dash 8, it's practically the same features, except for a few missing such as a short horn and all that so if I just quickly unmute the sound so that is its engine noise, it's quite loud um, function 1 is a bell once again slow pace but plenty loud enough that just slowly fades out once you turn the sound off function 2 is the horn And that's really it for the actual audible sounds, except for brakes and all that. So, yeah, that's really it for the decoder functions. Let's um, get these let's get these two locomotives running. After them running shots, it's time to look at the boxes. I have both boxes for these locomotives. So let's start with the SD70's boxes. Let's move that over to one side. So the SD70 comes this, uh, with this commemor 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 commemorative box. There we go. It has it has the design of the front of the uh, livery with the same shade of blue. Red stripe, red stripe gold stripe, grey. Power bar people up here. Then it has that round door that was on the back of the loco locomotive, which says "Courage to Care, Union Pacific," and then some Latin. Huh. It has the Union Pacific shield. Then the Athen Genesis locomotive. On this side of the box, you have the Athen Genesis uh, logo again in gold. I'll just move this closer. It has um, the warning stuff. Obviously, this. This product contains chemicals known to the state of California to cause cancer. I'm sorry, what? Oh, state of California, right, okay. Has some smaller writing. Oh, okay. oh it's just about the FS, FS, 
FCC and then it's copyright 2019 Horizon Hobbies LLC Alpha and Genesis as close to it as it gets. Oh yeah, it's just about copyright. And then it's about age recommend recommendation which is 14 and then it says this is not a toy Her horizon models the uh, llc's the logo down there on the on on this side it has the Athen genesis uh, logo with a red stripe that goes all the way around the box actually then it's just the Athen genesis lo logo again with the red stripe then on this side you, you have a diagram of the locomotive Athen genesis logo and color this time and and then you have the product code which is eight ATHG01111 with sound and it's Union Pacific ST70 AC1111 powered by our people. Um, LED, yeah, it's got LED sounds as I said, Tsunami 2 decoder, and then there's the barcode and, and the price that I paid for it £189.50. So that's really it for the outside of the box. It's, it's a very nice box, one of my favourites. So let's get this open like that. It's very solid cardboard. It's very similar to Dapol's boxes, you know, nice thick cardboard. So, so unless you have this, uh, all the stuff about CVs, um, uh, the actual decoder functions and stuff, you got Tsunami 2 <laughs> logo down there. So, on the first page, you have uh, handling and maintenance, and then I think on the second page, you actually have lubrication points. Uh, yes, so. Here are, here are all the lubrication points. There's plenty of them. And on this side you just have more stuff about uh, DC and DCC. On this page you actually have the uh, decoder functions. Uh, as I went through before, it's all the same. It's got some writing down there. Over here you've got operating with DCC and then programming and reading CVs. Obviously I know all that stuff by now. And here you have all your CVs. There's about three pages of this. Uh, so there's two pages. Oh never mind, there's four. There might be more actually. Okay, there's, there's more. There's about six pages now. So yeah, plenty of CVs. Um, I'm not touching any of them, or unless I really have to. More CVs. Oh god, that's seven. And then basic troubleshooting about, you know, switching on and off, all that stuff, and then all of that right in there. On the back, you just have some notes, just in case you want to write anything down about the logo. And on the back, you just have the Afro and Genesis logo in colour. So that's really it for that book take the foam off, this is just a thin sheet of foam it just goes over the top of the ice cube so here we have the interior of the box, as I said similar to Dapples it, very nice foam around the ice cube not getting damaged at all in, in transit so here's the ice cube, you just have this plastic sleeve that goes over it like that, It's you've got protective uh, bits where the actual body makes contact with the thing it's, that standard ice cube, just open it like that. Hopefully, I can close it. I don't have the best history with closing ice cubes. Just quickly pop that back in. So, at the bottom, you have a list of spare parts. There's plenty of. I think there's. Um, I think this is the sheet for both kind of SD7s, is the AC and the yeah, M2. So, here we have it for the. Um, What's this for? I don't know. That's for the... I think that's for the ACE. Uh, plenty of parts. All have numbers, so you can probably just order them off at uh, Athen. Okay. Ah, this is for the M2, because it's got the... Um, what's the headlight in the, in the nose? So here's all of that stuff for that. Let's quickly fold that back up. Like that. Ooh, warranty. Obviously this is probably expired by now, unless it hasn't been activated. So here you have the warranty sheet. I don't know how long it's for. Let's quickly read.
Uh, right, there's more paper. Oh, this is just about the um, about everything about how it complies with F FCC standards and stuff. And that's really it for the box. You just got more foam. So yeah, jam that paperwork back in. So yeah, that's really it for the box. There's detailing, that's just multiple unit pipes. Nothing much with that. Right, so we've got a, a reboxing. So yeah, that's how the box goes together. Very nice box. Right, let's move on to the Atlas's box. Let's bring that back. So it's not as long, but it's much taller. It's about half an inch taller than the uh, SD70 box. So um. Yeah, it has a quantum sound system, and this I think it's a quantum decoder too. So um, thicker foam than the ST70. Here you have a paperwork. Paperwork. Quickly get the book out. Go through that. Oh come on! Yeah, there we go. I got it. Right. So, here you have all the contents, plenty of contents, uh, let's just go to the important stuff, uh, oh, oh right, yeah, there's nothing really important, but it's just about all the features of the decoder and stuff, so, nothing really much of importance. Well, let's take the second foam, foam sheet off, and there you, have, there you have the ice cube. Yeah, similar box to the SD70 foam surrounding it, but this this ice cube is considerably smaller. Why is it so small? So once again, standard ice cube, just you know, opens like that. Um, so that's really it to say about the boxes of these two logos. Oh, the surrounding exterior. Of the Atlas box. Do that once I stop having a war with the ice cube. So, box. It has the Atlas logo in gold on the front. R realistic sounds of prototypical locomotives. That's just all the features and stuff on the Dakota. Same for the other side. Then on the front, you have the. Um, Item number which is nine nine six six seven BNSF war bonnet road number eight twelve H O dash it dash eight dash forty C W uh, locomotive Atlas Master Series locomotive gold and then you just got the uh, Atlas logo. So that's really it for the boxes. Oh, and by the way, the reason why there's barely any running shots of the Dash 8 is that it does have some faults with it, but that's not representative of all Atlas Dash 8s. So that's just a bit of a me problem. Really. Um, not Atlas's fault. The previous owner, I got it off eBay, so previous owner obviously didn't look after it properly. So yeah, time for my uh, final verdict of whether we should buy them wait for a sale, completely avoid them. So yeah, let's go and do that. So it's time for my final verdict on these two models. Whether you should buy them, wait for a sale, or completely avoid. So let's start with the SD70. For this model, um, I paid an absolutely fantastic price of £189.50 with the sound decoder. Over here, that is a fantastic price for a sound locomotive, as we usually pay upwards of £300. Oh, it's getting expensive. But yeah, that was a fantastic price, and uh, the SD70 has a fantastic um, mechanism in it, and also fantastic speakers, and the livery is just absolutely amazing. 
So I would say get it if you can for a fair price, obviously. Over here, Rails of Sheffield, got, and that's where I got mine from. Fantastic prices, but over in America, I don't know how much they are. Uh, uh, for the Dash 8, I would say, um, I would say get it if you want to, because with the Dash 8, most of them are four axle locomotives, not six axle like mine. Uh, so, um, you can also get them with sound for a fair price, uh, ranging from about 150 to 180 so once again, fantastic prices over here, once again, don't know about the US. Um, so yeah, both of these locomotives are absolutely fantastic, if the Dash 8 didn't have its motor issues or whatever it's causing it out, uh, that would be a fantastic model, but obviously it does, that is not Atz's fault, that is the previous owner's fault. So thank you for watching, and I'll see you in it. And I'll see you in the next review. Goodbye.